Software engineer is one of the most demanded jobs across the world. There are so many career opportunities, fantastic perks and high salaries. Still, one of the best things about becoming a software engineer in the current times is that you don't need to study computer science to become a developer anymore. It's true that some time ago, most companies require a relevant degree, but right now, companies want to hire people with different backgrounds. The number of self-teaching programmers is growing every single day. The internet, an immense online community of engineers and free resources or low-cost ones, has made this possible. The demand for software engineers will likely grow by 20-25% in the coming years. In today's video, I'll tell you what being a software engineer actually means and the different roles you can find within this vast job title. So let's start with what a software engineer is. A software engineer is a computer science professional who applies engineering principles and their knowledge of programming languages to the design, development, testing, evaluation and maintenance of computer software. A software engineer tries to systematize the process of making software with proven techniques and methodologies, following a software development life cycle to limit the risk of failure. It can feel like a complex definition, so let's break it down. We have the word software and engineering principles, and all of these are the responsibilities that this professional could have. We'll cover all of these points. By the end of the video, you'll have a clear idea of everything involved in the profession. What is software? What is not software? Software is a collection of built-in programs. It could be a system or an application that runs on computers and machines, any device that you can think of. They are created to perform a specific operations. Some examples of software are your operation system that is running on your computer, like iOS or Windows, any application you can think of like WhatsApp, YouTube, Instagram, a video game you play is also a piece of software. Um, basically, any digital device probably has some software behind it. It's crucial to distinguish software from hardware. Hardware is the physical part. One second. It's my computer or my camera, ebook, iPad, and the software. The software is the program that runs inside that allows us to use it. Without software, all of these elements would be just ornaments. It's essential to distinguish between both parts. Both depends on each other. They only make sense together, but they are really different concepts. The people who design and build hardware have entirely different type of jobs and set of skills. I'm making an input about it because I've been asked questions in the style of can you fix my laptop or my headphones are not working, do you know why? And when I say no, I don't know about those things, they look shocked. Like if, a software, and, like if software and hardware are the same thing or if I should know about that as part of my software engineer role. A good way to understand what software engineers do is to think that they need to create a software program that runs on hardware that always remains the same. So if you think about your smart TV, all the physical part of your TV will not change. And a software engineer needs to build something, let's say Netflix, that it needs to work in your smart TV brand, in your neighbors, your parents, and so on. Considering that new TVs models with new features might come up to the market, this piece of software also needs to be scalable to work well on all new devices. We also saw in the definition that software engineers apply principal engineering rules. These are guidelines of best practices, style, pattern, design, methodology and philosophy recommended by the industry. So there is no set of defined rules. They are just guidelines that each company can interpret as they wish. So this can differ from company to company. For example, using modern programming practices, having a life cycle plan in place, continuous integration, continuous deployment, the stability, maintainability. Let's use the Netflix application example to understand all of these phases. So suppose the project manager comes to you and tells you the company wants to build a streaming service platform that offers films and series to users. First, you need to have meetings to gather as many requirements as possible with different stakeholders. Product owners, product designer, UX, UI, analytics, business people, and any other people involved in the project. Then you'll enter the system design phase. This is about designing the software you're building from a technical point of view. So defining all the modules that compose your app, the names, their functions, the interconnection, the dependencies on each other, 
Also defining the data. What data do you need for your platform? We need a title, videos, um, film images in the Netflix example. And we also need to think about where we will store our data. In the same way, you probably use Google Drive or Dropbox to store your images or documents. As a software engineer, you also need to consider what service you will use. Also, how many users do we expect to have? In what countries are we going to make Netflix available? Where are we going to store all the users' data? Their login details, their preference. And another feature that Netflix has is to display personalized content. How are we going to create this logic? What are we going to take into account? By the end of this phase, you'll have a detailed architecture with diagrams and tech details. This phase is key to having a successful product. Then we develop the software. This is the programming phase. I won't go into too much detail. Most of my videos are about coding. So if you want to learn how to code, make sure you hit the subscribe button. The technology and language you use in this phase depends entirely on the hardware of the device you are building this for. So if you want to build a Netflix native app for smartphones like iPhone or Android, you will use a completely different technology than if you were building an app that you can open with your browser, aka websites. And here is where the difference between engineers starts. But we'll talk more about it later. Every bit we add to our app needs to be tested truly to ensure we build a quality product. Once our Netflix app is all done, it's important to test it with real users on as many devices as possible. Once we are 100% happy, we will deploy our app. Deploy means launching it, making it live and available for everyone. But our job doesn't end here. We don't just move on to the next thing. Why? Because we want people to use our product, in this case, Netflix. And the devices, the TV, the smartphones, the computers, they are constantly changing. So we need to keep up with those changes, or maybe as simple as we all make mistakes, don't we? Or we assume people might use our application in a certain way, or things might not work as expected. Here is where the evaluation phase begins. As an engineer, you need to learn to use some tools that allow you to read and analyze how the users are using your app or how the app is performing. Is the app slow? Are the users complaining because the app stops working? Also, see if there are improvements or new business ideas to keep pushing the software and offering more to people. And finally, we need to ensure that our product is up and running at all times, as well as fixing any bug and flawless functionalities, and upgrading our software to add better functionalities based on the evaluation reports. And this is, in a nutshell, the whole life cycle involved in creating software. Roles of a software engineer. If you work for a small company, you probably will have more opportunities to work across all the phases. Still, the projects that you work on might be smaller. It depends. And if you work for a big company, your tasks and responsibilities will likely be narrowed down to specific areas, but you still need to know how everything works out together. You might jump from one area to other or get involved in the decisions made in each phase. Some of these roles can be web developer as a front-end, back-end or full-stack developer. And let me stop here to explain that front is all the visual part you see on the web. Everything you interact with, a button, a menu, or when you click in the subscribe button and that button plays a sound and turns red, all of that is done by a front-end developer, sometimes also called UI developers. Then the back are the developers that work with the data. So they make it possible that when you click on the subscribe button and ring the bell, that gets stored somewhere. So next time you log into YouTube, you'll see my videos on the homepage and you won't miss it. Okay, so then we have the full stack. Those are the professionals who work across both parts. They have the skills to work in the, in, with front-end technologies as likewise back-end technologies. App developer, building apps for Android or Apple, DevOps, dev uh, DevOps engineer, system engineer, QA engineer, data engineer, and... How was that? Too much information? Do you at least have a better idea of the software engineer role? Please let me know your opinion in the comments. And if you found this content helpful and interesting, like the video and subscribe to my channel for more videos about computer science and software engineering. Thank you for watching.